It's Wednesday, September 2nd, 2010. I'm Jeff Bacalar and it's time to get loaded. Apple updated its line of iPod music players in a pretty significant way. The iPod Shuffle thankfully got its buttons back. The iPod Nano by far received the biggest change, dropping the iconic click wheel for a tiny 3cm by 3cm multi-touch display. The iPod Touch now comes with a high resolution retina display from the iPhone 4, a front facing camera for FaceTime calls, and HD recording on the rear. The iPod Classic remains unchanged from last year's model at 160 gigabytes. The new iPods are available for pre-order now and ship next week. Steve Jobs also announced new updates to iOS. Starting next week, iOS 4.1 will fix the proximity sensor issues, but also allows for HDR photography. That means the iPhone 4 will now take three images in rapid succession at various exposures to pull in detail from highlights and shadows. iOS 4.1 also brings along Game Center, which is Apple's gaming social network, along with iTunes Ping, which is Apple's new social network for music sharing and discovery. That functionality is also built into iTunes 10. The company also previewed iOS 4.2, which will be released in November for the iPad, bringing multitasking, folders, and finally wireless printing to the iPad. Apple's one last thing moment was a drastically different Apple TV. Previously, Apple TV allowed users to store movies and music in the device's hard drive, but the new hardware does away with all of that. Instead, now it's a streaming-centric device, which can play movies, TV shows, and music streamed over your home network. It can also stream Netflix titles. In addition, you can now rent movies for $4.99 or TV shows for just $0.99. Cents. The new Apple TV will retail for only $99. In some non-Apple news, Microsoft has released Windows Phone 7 to OEMs so that they can complete their enhancements and customizations to the new mobile operating system in time for the holidays. However, there's no specific dates on when these models will be released. The FCC has unfortunately struck another blow to net neutrality by delaying action on new rules that would subject wireless networks to the same net neutrality rules as wired connections. Now this is all after Verizon and Google struck together a framework that most advocates of net neutrality viewed as a significant blow to the movement. And finally, Sony has released three new models of its e-readers with enhanced touch-based e-ink Pearl technology. The new models will cost $180, $230, and $300 respectively, but wireless connectivity is reserved to only the high-end model. It's kind of a bummer considering the lowest end Kindle and Nook still have Wi-Fi and they're only $149. Those are your headlines for today. I'm Jeff Bacalar for CNET.com and you've just been loaded.